Hey ladies and gentlemen, before I kick off this video, some of you may have noticed that this looks a bit familiar, and well, you'd be correct. I'd previously taken down this video a bit ago due to some copyright issues, but now I've had a breath of fresh air and some time to work on it. Rather than focusing on newer videos, I was able to edit out those clips and re-upload it. I do apologize that the my quality might not be that good, so enjoy. I'm sure you all know the largest land predator of the current day, the polar bear. The very bear that's plastered all over the coke commercials. But I think at some point in your life, you've asked yourself, hey, polar bears live in the North Pole. How would they fare in the South Pole? And that's what I'm going to answer today. G'day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host answering the question, could polar bears survive in Antarctica? Well, first, we'll need to go through the polar bear and its stats before moving on to Antarctica and what it has to offer for the bear. As clearly seen, the polar bear is a massive predator with males ranging from about 8 to 10 feet in length, while females are around 6 to 8 feet in length. Not only are they long, they are also heavy, with males typically reaching 550 to 1700 pounds, while females are between 330 to 650 pounds. This cements them as the largest land predator of the modern day. However, they can even exceed these weights, with the largest weighing 2,209 pounds and standing nearly 12 feet tall. But I mean, hey, we can't just look at their size. We need to also view its other adaptions, which assists it to be a successful predator in one of the coldest regions of the world. And how would that translate into Antarctica? Well, the polar bears have a dense two-layered fur coat. The outer layer consists of guard hairs that repel water and help to camouflage the bear in its snowy surroundings. The undercoat provides an insulation, retaining body heat and keeping the bear warm, even in freezing temperatures. Beneath their fur, polar bears have thick layer of blubber that serves as an energy reserve. This blubber provides both an insulation and a source of nourishment during periods of food scarcity or when the polar bears are unable to hunt. Polar bears are well adapted to swimming. They have large front powerful limbs that are semi-webbed. The function is that of a paddle and their back limbs are used for steering. They can also swim for long distances and are known to cover vast expanses of the Arctic Ocean in search for food. Polar bears also have specialized organs that enable them to process large amounts of vitamin A and filter out excess seawater and filter out excess salt from their diet. Now, these are just some of the adaptions which greatly assist the polar bear to survive in its own environment. But how does this translate in helping it survive in Antarctica in a hypothetical situation? Well, in order to know this, we need to first look at the environment of Antarctica. Now, clearly it's brutal with an average weather in summer being negative two degrees to eight degrees at the most. And during the winter, it's often between negative 40 to negative 57 degrees Celsius. According to our knowledge, polar bears are able to survive the temperatures below negative 50 and above 10 degrees Celsius. Now, in this hypothetical, we'll have that the polar bear population remains in the warmer parts of the South Pole as although they can clearly survive cold environments, I'm not entirely confident that these bears would be able to survive the coldest regions that Antarctica has to offer. As from my research, it's clear that Antarctica can reach below negative 90 degrees, so this dwarfs anything that the Arctic has to offer. So now that we've established a polar bear population in let's say the warmer regions of the South Pole, we need to ask, what will they eat and drink? Well, luckily for the polar bear, Antarctica holds the largest amount of fresh water on the planet. So, I think it'll be taken care in that respect. However, its diet is where things can become difficult. Polar bears rely on sea ice as a platform for hunting seals as their primary prey. They can use the ice to travel and find food. In contrast though, Antarctica has a more stable ice sheet that surrounds the continent year round. The distribution of sea ice in Antarctica is quite different from the fragmented and mobile sea ice found in the Arctic. This would make it difficult for the polar bears to find suitable hunting grounds and access prey in Antarctica. This really means one of two things. They either die out or they adapt and change their hunting style for their new prey. The diet of the polar bears in the Arctic primarily consists of seals, which are abundant in the icy Arctic waters. The polar bears are specialized hunters in marine mammals and have developed specific hunting techniques for their specific seals. However, in Antarctica, the main marine life may be seals, but they're different species, such as the Weddell seals, leopard seals, and elephant seals. These seals have evolved in a completely different environment and have such different behaviors and adaptions, making it a challenge for polar bears to successfully hunt them. Now true, there are other species for them to hunt, such as penguins, which could make for a good food supply 
for the population in Antarctica. This would greatly assist in them surviving early on, and I believe that they'd completely upset the food chain however. This is due to the fact that the polar bear is an apex predator, and although they might not hunt certain species, such as the elephant seals due to them being too large, there's not much else that could combat them. Not even the leopard seal. A high ranking predator in Antarctica would be able to combat the polar bear. This is due to this clear size difference, meaning that the polar bear more often than not would probably just hunt the seal as well. In my opinion, there's only really two major creatures in Antarctica that can cause the polar bear real issues. This being the elephant seal and the orca. These two creatures would definitely have their way and destroy a polar bear if it was to be messed with. Now look, overall, I just don't think that a polar bear population could live in Antarctica over an extended period of time. In my opinion, there are three routes which the scenario could go through. The first and most likely being that they just die off from the intensity of the climate. They are used to the Arctic regions, but Antarctica gets so much colder than the Arctic, and hence they might have a difficulty surviving. The second being that they aren't able to adapt fast enough in their hunting strategies against the various fauna. Seals in two different regions aren't going to act the same, hence meaning that the polar bear will have to change up its hunting styles in this new environment, and if not, it would again die out. Now the third, which could also be a likely one, is that they do adapt, but in doing so, they destroy Antarctica's fragile food web, which eventually causes them to die out. I mean, think about it. Creatures such as penguins and other seals might hide from creatures such as orcas on these ice, since clearly orcas can't climb. However, if on the terrestrial land of Antarctica, you have polar bears walking around and just consuming all the seals and the penguins, well then, in my opinion, the food balance is going to be completely disrupted as the polar bears will consume everything on land while the orcas kill everything in the water or the leopard seals in the water. This just eventually causes the whole food chain to collapse and well, the polar bears again die out. In conclusion, the environmental differences between the Arctic and Antarctica, including the climate, sea distribution, food availability and the ecosystem composition would indeed make it difficult for the polar bear to survive and thrive in Antarctica. Again, I gotta say sorry for any of the editing or the English or just the sentences it was a bit wonky. This is one of the older videos, so we'll make sure we get on track with all the newer stuff. Now that we've reached the end of the video, I hope you all enjoyed and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you all next time.